You guys, except for Mike Boots, even Mike Boots has never been to one. Um, you guys have never been to a Poetry Slam, right? You guys don't know what it's all about? No, no, no. All right. Well, at Poetry Slam, <laughs> if you like something, you make noise, bro. You go nuts. All right? So, you like you like anything you hear? <laughs> go nuts. nuts bro. Gotcha. Right. So, this is called plagiarism. If life is a test, and you're perpetually a fifth grader, God is the kid with the window seat who punches you in the face and steals your work. Then he hands it into the teacher and does a dance like a proudly exposed caper. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> but Kelly's hero is her father because he's gone. Her inspiration is known. Her accomplishments are impressively peculiar. She found a turtle in the meadows once. Its shell was cracked. She took it home and Googled directions on how to repair a turtle shell. She uses cheap casts from her uncle's model train room and painted the patch midnight green. It fell off before we got to return the turtle, and the next words out of her mouth derived, uh, derived from her eyes, which poured down her face like her eyelids held pictures of liquid realization that left trails of its existence on her cheeks, like the spit from her mother's gums when she told Kelly how much of a whore she was. <laughs> I like that, too. Now, I'll tell you this to assure you that Kelly doesn't have any frame of reference on being as warm and sympathetic as she is. She's that way because she fucking wants to be. Ben's father's name is Russ, and he's in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's. He can't tell a sock from a condom and is 100% positive that Aggie is still alive. Ben takes care of Russ all by himself and manages a call center downtown next to the church where Russ and Agatha got married. Ben's 15th birthday became a going away party when Russ touched Ben for the last time. Ben realized he could leave, so he did. I tell you this so you understand that Ben had all the justification in town to bid Russ do three years ago when he begged Ben's forgiveness, but more importantly, for his health. Ben helped because he fucking wanted to. See, for every Kelly, there's a Megan, who crushes turtle shells with her feet purposely. For every Ben, there's a Kyle, who put his picture-perfect parents on a shelf in a state-run nursing home that he's never seen the inside of. For every low-flying, lazy, underachieving bum that doesn't strive for greatness, there's athletes, doctors, musicians, teachers, lawyers, barbers, nurses, poets, parents, managers, bankers, straight-A students, who all do it because they fucking want to. Nobody ever credits God for the apathetic attitudes of those who don't try. They appropriately credit those who choose to abstain from glory. But those of us who succeed at what it is we work so hard for, owe it all to a higher power, fuck your religion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! No, really, literally fuck your religion. At least that way you can have an experience that God can finally take credit for. He may have given everyone life, but he damn sure didn't bless everyone with motivation, determination, initiative. So if you got it, brother, flaunt it, and if you use it, sis, to show it, because you <laughs> don't owe anything to him. You owe it all to the ambitious characters called aspiration and dedication. You owe it to the individual who got up, checked out present-day self in the mirror with reality tinted goggles on, and chose to adjust the reflection. You owe all of this to you. Yeah! yeah. yeah. No doubt. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah.